My ichthyosaur. Pretty cool creature, huh? Um, pretty prehistoric. Um, we're reading a new story about Mary Anning. Um, I kind of wanted to show you this because she was a really cool lady and she liked to hunt for fossils. And uh, this little guy might come up in our story. So strap in. We're getting right into the first lesson. New book. Are you ready for the journey? Different time, different place. We're going way back to a different land. Let's go together. I'll put him here. Let's go. Mary, Mary, where are you going? Out of the cottage, away from her chores, and down to the sea. That's where Mary was going. Over rocks slippery with seaweed slime, near the crumbling cliffs of England's south coast. That's where you'd find Mary. It was a dangerous place, a wild, windy world. Falling pebbles plink-plocked off her bonnet. But Mary didn't care. There were fossils here, ancient fish teeth and curly shells and animal bones in the rock. Curiosities, curios, the treasure seekers called them. They were odd, dainty things to look at and ooh and ah over, and Mary's family could sell as many as she could find. But were those rock creatures alive at one time? When did they live? What did they do? Did anyone think about this? Shivering under her quilt at night, Mary thought of these things. Her feet were sore and her back ached from hours and hours, hunched like a gull, picking away at the rocks. But still, she thought. She wondered again as she closed her eyes, but the mystery in the rocks would have to wait. Mary was fast asleep. One dark, stormy day, Mary sat in her father's workshop, a cozy, dusty place. It was quiet, too. No one was there except Mary and her father, the two fossil finders hard at work. Her father chipped chipped away at rocks until the fossils appeared. Mary took the tiny pick that her father made for her and chipped chipped away bits of rock too. Everything Mary knew about fossils, she learned while working with her father. When the storm ended, Mary grabbed a basket, hammer and chisel. She ran out of the workshop and straight to the sea. Mary knew that after a storm was the best time to search for fossils. The wind and the water broke the cliffs open and fossils that had been buried were now exposed. Mary picked through the rocks. Soon her fingers were numb from the cold. Her skirts were muddy and wet, but Mary didn't mind. She was happy there, looking for fossils and helping her father. What kind of girl spends her days like that? Shouldn't Mary be indoors at school? The townspeople wondered and whispered these things whenever they saw Mary. Mary, they said, had always been different. Was it because she had been struck by lightning when she was a tiny, sickly baby. There were three townspeople near Mary that day who were struck by lightning too. They didn't survive. Only Mary did. And look at her now, curious, stubborn, and independent. Mary did whatever she wanted to do. When Mary was eleven, her father died. Soon after that, she stepped into his dusty workshop. It looked the same, but something had changed. Sadness hung in the air, it lurked in the shadows, and Mary couldn't bear to be there. She went down to the cliffs, noisy with seabirds and crashing waves, but it was no better there. Every fossil she found made her think of her father, so Mary stayed away from her favorite places. 